Imagine an airplane flying less than one centimeter above the ground at a speed of 170 miles per second, counting every single blade of grass while making little to no errors. Or imagine if you could store 1,000 books, hundreds of thousands of words, a whole library of information in an area equivalent to that of the tip of a ballpoint pen. Well, that's exactly what a computer hard drive does. But how exactly is it able to store so much information in such a limited amount of space? Well, the primary components of every hard disk drive are a small metallic disk and a read-write head, which are analogous to a vinyl record in the needle of the record player. The disk is small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, and it's made of aluminum magnesium alloy along with other alloys, but where the magic happens is within a 120 nanometer thin layer of cobalt tantalum alloy that serves as the magnetic functional layer. This layer is made up of small magnetic regions that can be manipulated by an external magnetic field. The disc spins at 7200 RPM with the read right head hovering just 15 nanometers above it. For reference, 15 nanometers is about the width of two DNA strands, or 40 atomic lengths. The disc itself is divided into circular tracks, much like the rings in the center of a tree. Some discs have up to 500,000 tracks per side, and these tracks are further divided into sectors, each of which stores a fixed amount of user accessible data. Zooming in, beginning each sector is a region called the preamble, which is a signal that prepares the drive to receive information by telling the read write head the speed of the disc and the length of each bit of data. The next region is the address mark and index signal, which marks the beginning of each gray code field. This allows the read write head to keep track of which track and sector it's currently hovering over. Then there's the actual data that is stored on the drive, with each sector capable of storing about 4 kilobytes of information. There are a couple other regions beyond the data, the most notable being the error correction code, or ECC. It detects and corrects errors on the fly that may occur when the read write head is reading information from the disk surface, ensuring that the data is accurately read. Now, let's take a look at how data is actually written onto the disk. As the disk spins, the read write head is able to manipulate the directionality of the magnetic field of tiny regions in the disk's magnetic layer. Each region is like a tiny cell with side lengths of roughly 100 nanometers, and when magnetized, every atom within that cell will have its magnetic poles pointing in the same direction, either up or down. Each cell is able to be magnetized by applying a current to a coil of wire at the back of the right head, which generates a strong magnetic field. This magnetic field can then be channeled through the right head and focused into a small point where it's transferred across the 15 nanometer gap into the disc. Once a magnetic field has been transferred into a single region or cell of the disc, that region maintains a permanent magnetic charge even after the right head moves away. Now, the only way the magnetic field of that region can change is if the right head rewrites a new bit of data over that region by flipping its magnetic field. But the computer can't understand these magnetic fields. So in order to read data, each magnetic field must be interpreted as either a zero or a one. As the read head passes over a cell whose magnetic field is pointing in the up direction, it will be interpreted as a one. And if it's pointing in the down direction, then it will be seen as a zero. But reading information is still not that simple. Rather than detecting the magnetic orientation of each individual cell, the read head is designed to detect changes in the orientation of a magnetic field. That is, when two adjacent regions have magnetic fields that differ from one another. This is because the magnetic field emitted between two adjacent regions that have opposite directions is much stronger and easier to detect than a stretch of regions that are all pointing in the same direction. So when the read head detects a change in the directionality of the magnetic field, it interprets that as a one. Whereas when it detects no change at all, it interprets that as a zero. So rather than reading the individual cells, it's reading the gaps between the cells. The read head is then able to translate the information stored on the disk into binary code that the machine can understand. Then the computer reformats that data and presents it to the user in a form that they can understand, like words or images that are made of pixels. When we look at hard drives in the 1980s, a 5 megabyte drive costs $1,500, meaning if you had a 1 terabyte drive back in the 80s, it would cost about $3 million. Today, in 2024, that same 1 terabyte drive not only costs less than $50, but is far faster and more reliable than any hardware from the 1980s. So, how have scientists and engineers been able to fit so much more data on these drives? One way is to make the charged regions on the disk smaller, but the smaller the regions are, the more sensitive they are to heat. If their volume becomes too small, the information stored in them gets wiped out from the temperature interference. But in 2010, engineers figured out a way around this issue by switching the orientation of the charged regions on the disk from horizontal to vertical. This allowed them to utilize the depth of the disk to maintain the volume of the regions while shrinking the amount of area each region takes up on the disk. That's pretty much it for the basic function of hard drives. The more you learn about how computers work, the more you realize how wild it is that humans were able to invent this technology. 
If you want to see more educational videos like this, that's all I do. So make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any future content. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching to the end.